Hi, I'm Claire, a librarian at Acton Memorial Library. In this video, I'm going to share the fourth part of a read aloud of the book, The Children of Odin by Pedrick Collum. This is a book of Norse mythology. If you missed any of the first three parts, they are available on Acton Memorial Library's YouTube channel, um, and that's parts one, two, and three. And this is part four. P part four is called Seif's Golden Hair, How Loki Wrought Mischief in Asgard. All who dwelt in Asgard, the Asir and the Asenir, who were the gods and the goddesses, and the Vanir, who were the friends of the gods and the goddesses, were wroth with Loki. It was no wonder they were wroth with him, for he had let the giant Thiasi carry off Iduna and her golden apples. Still, it must be told that the show they made of their wrath made Loki ready to do more mischief in Asgard. One day, he saw a chance to do mischief that made his heart rejoice. Sif, the wife of Thor, was lying asleep outside her house. Her beautiful golden hair flowed all round her. Loki knew how much Thor loved that shining hair and how greatly Sif prized it because of Thor's love. Here was his chance to do a great mischief. Smilingly, he took out his shears and he cut off the shining hair, every strand and every tress. She did not waken while her treasure was being taken from her, but Loki left Sif's head cropped and bare. And I do have an illustration to share with you. You can see Loki cutting Sif's hair while she sleeps. Thor was away from Asgard. Coming back to the city of the gods, he went into his house. Sif, his wife, was not there to welcome him. He called to Sif, but no glad answer came from her. To the palaces of all the gods and goddesses, Thor went, but in none of them did he find Sif, his golden-haired wife. When he was coming back to his house, he heard his name whispered. He stopped, and then a figure stole out from behind a stone. A veil covered her head, and Thor scarce knew that this was Sif, his wife. As he went to her, she sobbed and sobbed. Oh, Thor, my husband, she said, do not look upon me. I'm so ashamed that you should see me. I shall go from Asgard and from the company of the gods and the goddesses, and I shall go down to Svartheim and live amongst the gnomes. I cannot bear that any of the dwellers in Asgard should look upon me now. Oh, Sif, cried Thor, what has happened to change you? I have lost the hair of my head, said Sif. I've lost the beautiful golden hair that you, Thor, loved. You will not love me any more. So I must go away, down to Svartheim, and to the company of the dwarves. They are as ugly as I am now. Then she took the veil off of her head, and Thor saw that all of her beautiful hair was gone. She stood before him, shamed and sorrowful, and he grew into a mighty rage. Who was it did this to you, Sif? He said, I am Thor, the strongest of the dwellers in Asgard, and I shall see to it that all the powers the gods possess will be used to get your fairness back. Come with me, Sif. And taking his wife's hand in his, Thor went off to the council house where the gods and the goddesses were. Sif covered her head with her veil, for she would not have the gods and goddesses look upon her shorn head. But from the anger in Thor's eyes, all saw that the wrong that was done to Sif was great indeed. Then Thor told of the cutting of her beautiful hair. A whisper went around the council house. It was Loki that did this. No one else in Asgard would have done a deed so shameful, one said to another. Loki it was who did it, said Thor, and he has hidden himself. But I shall find him, and I will slay him. Nay, not so, Thor, said Odin, the father of the gods. Nay, no dweller in Asgard may slay another. I shall summon Loki to come before us here. It is for you to make him, and remember, 
that Loki is cunning and able to do many things, bring back to Sif the beauty of her golden hair. Then the call of Odin, a call that all in Asgard have to hearken to, went through the city of the gods. Loki heard it, and he had to come out of his hiding place and enter the house where all the gods held their counsel. And when he looked on Thor and saw the rage that was in his eyes, and when he looked on Odin and saw the sternness in the face of the father of the gods, he knew that he would have to make amends for the shameful wrong that he had done to Sif. Said Odin, There is a thing that you, Loki, have to do. Restore to Sif the beauty of her hair. Loki looked at Odin, Loki looked at Thor, and he saw that what was said would have to be done. His quick mind searched, a way of, uh, searched to find a way of restoring to Sif the beauty of her golden hair. I shall do as you command, Odin Allfather, he said. But before we tell you of what Loki did to restore the beauty of Sif's golden hair, we must tell you of other beings besides the gods and the goddesses who were in the world at the time. First, there was the Vanir. When the gods were called to Asir and came to the mountain on which they built Asgard, they found other beings there. These were not wicked, wicked and ugly like the giants. They were beautiful and friendly. The veneer they were named. Although they were beautiful and friendly, the veneer had no thought of making the world more beautiful or more happy. In that way, they differed from the Asir, who had such a thought. The Asir made peace with them, and they lived together in friendship. And the veneer came to do things that helped the Asir make the world more beautiful and more happy. Freya whom the giant wanted to take away with the sun and the moon as a reward for the building of the wall around Asgard, was of the veneer. The other beings of the veneer were Frey, who was the brother of Freya, and Njord, who was their father. On the earth below there were other things, the dainty elves who danced and fluttered around, attending to the trees and the flowers and the grasses. The veneer were permitted to rule over the elves, and then, Below the earth, in caves and hollows, there was another group, the gnomes, little twisted creatures who were both wicked and ugly, but who were the best craftsmen in the world. In the days when neither the Asir nor the Vanir were friendly to him, Loki used to go down to Svartheim, the gnomes dwelling below the earth. And now that he was commanded to restore to Sif the beauty of her hair, Loki thought of help he might get from the gnomes. Down, down, through the winding passages in the earth he went, and he at last came to where the gnomes, who were most friendly to him, were working in their forges. All the gnomes were master smiths, and when he came upon his friends, he found them working with hammer and tongs, beating metal into many shapes. He watched them for a while and took note of the things that they were making. One was a spear so well balanced and made that it would hit whatever mark it was thrown at, no matter how bad the aim the thrower had. And the other was a boat that could sail on any sea, but that could be folded up and so it would go into one's pocket. The spear was called Gungnir and the boat was called Skidbladnir, Skidbladnir. Loki made himself very agreeable to the gnomes, praising their work and promising them things that only the dwellers in Asgard could give, things that the gnomes longed to possess. He talked to them till the little ugly folk thought that they would come to own Asgard and all that was in it. And at last, Loki said to them, uh, have you got a bar of fine gold that you can hammer into threads, into threads so fine that they will be like the hair of Sif, Thor's wife? Only the gnomes could make a thing so wonderful. Oh, there's a bar of gold. Hammer it into those fine threads, and the gods themselves will be jealous of your work. Flattered by Loki's speeches, the gnomes who were in the forge took up the bar of fine gold and flung it into the fire. Then, taking it out and putting it upon their anvil, they worked the bar with their tiny hammers until they beat it into threads as fine as the hairs of one's head. 
but that was not enough. They had to be as fine as the hairs on Seif's head, and these were finer than anything else. They worked on the threads over and over again until they were as fine as the hairs on Seif's head. The threads were as bright as sunlight, and when Loki took up the mass of worked gold, it flowed from his raised hand down to the ground. It was so fine that it could be put into his palm, and it was so light that a bird might not feel its weight. Then Loki praised the gnomes more and more, and he made more and more promises to them. He charmed them all, although they were an unfriendly and suspicious folk. And before he left them, he asked them for the spear and the boat he had seen them make, the spear Gungnir and the boat Skidbladnir. The, the gnomes gave him these things, though in a while they started to wonder at themselves for giving them. Back to Asgard, Loki went. He walked into the council house where the dwellers in Asgard were gathered. He met the stern look in Odin's eyes and the rageful look in Thor's eyes with a smiling good humor. Off with thy veil, O Sif, he said. And when poor Sif took off her veil, he put upon her shorn head the wonderful mass of gold he held in his palm. Over her shoulders the gold fell, fine, soft, and shining as her own hair. And the Asir and the Asinir, the gods and the goddesses, and the Van and the Vanna, when they saw Sif's head covered again with the shining web, laughed and clapped their hands in gladness. And the shining web held to Sif's head as if indeed it had roots and was growing there. And that is the end of part four of The Children of Odin. Thank you for joining me.